Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today, we're going to take a look at Ursula K. Le Guin's The Lathe of Heaven from 1971. This novel is not connected with any of her fantasy worlds or science fiction worlds. It's a singleton or a standalone. Today, I'm going to actually read the blurb on the back. I think it's a very good blurb describing the book. George Orr is, in most respects, a mild and unremarkable man, but he has an ability with which he can transform the world around him, for George's dreams alter reality. His psychiatrist, William Haber, at first skeptical, cannot resist using George's powers once he sees their effects, initially just to advance his own career, but then gaining confidence to try to change their overcrowded world into a more attractive place. As this is a science fiction novel, I'm sure you can guess that things don't go according to plan. Altering reality through dreams may be controlled to a point, but dreams seem to have their own perspective, their own psychedelic way of seeing things. This novel, with its experimentation with reality, seems to be part of an American response to the new wave of the UK. This is where this novel is quite different than her science fiction and fantasy from the first 10 years of her career. The order of publication for Le Guin's novels starts with Rokanon's World, Planet of Exile, City of Illusions, A Wizard of Earthsea, Left Hand of Darkness, and then The Lathe of Heaven. In the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Science Fiction by John Clute, he says of her first novels, From the first, Le Guin was quietly remarkable. An unruffled narrative technique and calm pacing made these first stories like landmines time to explode in the mind after being read. This novel, however, seems to explode right away. Now, the protagonist's name is George Orr. I don't know about you, but what that reminded me of... was George Orwell. It seems too much of a coincidence. I really don't know a connection between George Orwell and George Orr. If you have a hypothesis, please put it in the comments below. One more comment about George Orr's name. In the book, one of the characters makes a nickname for Orr. It's only mentioned once, but it's either Orr. It seems like it's a reference to Haber and Orr. Either you try to control things or you just let things be. George Orr represents a Taoist attitude in this book. Instead of trying to make something happen, you let something happen. His psychiatrist, William Haber, on the other hand, is a well-meaning do-gooder who wants to use this power to change the world for the better. At least that's how it starts. But I am a professional, and I know precisely what I'm doing. I can auto-suggest an entire dream and dream it in every detail precisely as thought out by my waking mind. I've done so every night this past week, getting in training. When the augmenter synchronizes the generalized E state pattern with my own D state, such dreams will be effectivized. And then, and then, the lips within the curly beard parted in a straining, staring smile, a grin of ecstasy that made Orr turn away, as if he had seen something never meant to be seen, both terrifying and pathetic. Then, this world will be like heaven, and men will be like gods. George says, All that is true, but there is... What, George? He was fatherly and patient now, and Orr forced himself to go on, knowing it was no good. We're in the world, not against it. It doesn't work to try to stand outside things and run them that way. It just doesn't work. It goes against life. There is a way, but you have to follow it. The world is, no matter how we think it ought to be. You have to be with it. You have to let it be. The title of the book is from the writings of Zheng Zhu. To let understanding stop at what cannot be understood is a high attainment. Those who cannot do it will be destroyed on the lathe of heaven. William Haber is on the lathe of heaven. This novel was very different from the five that preceded it. It had a more mature tone of writing, 
Although there is a large dose of Taoism and turns of phrases that could only be Le Guin, it still felt more like Le Guin trying to be something that she really wasn't. It felt like Le Guin was trying to make a contemporary novel of her time of 1971 instead of the fantasy or far future science fiction that she had been writing. In a way, it felt like an imitation of, let's say, Philip K. Dick. So there are some wonderful ideas and moments in here, but I don't think it really hangs together well. I give it 7 out of 10. There is also an adaptation of the novel. The Lathe of Heaven was a 1980 film by Public TV. It stars Bruce Davison as George Orr, Kevin Conway as Dr. William Haber, and Margaret Avery as lawyer Heather Laloche. I remember watching it at the time, and I found it confusing. I haven't talked about some plot elements here, but there are some aliens involved, and these aliens are difficult to portray. There are also some disasters that befall Portland and the rest of the world. Even though I was in my late teens, I don't think I was ready for a show about reality and dreams. How about you? Did you like The Lathe of Heaven? How about the film from PBS? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time. Keep reading.